You can see it across Africa. Young men trying to become football stars and often playing the game just for the love of it. But behind these everyday scenes are extraordinary stories of lives on the edge and none more so than the story of this team's coach. Today, George has been helping train a team of young people and veterans in Ghana. Next week, he might be back home in nearby Liberia or in Florida, USA, where he's studying business administration and criminal justice, the kind of education which, like many of these kids, he's never had. Few footballers have lived in a more globalised world than George Weir, African world football star. Well, uh, coming from the ghetto, you know, I've, I've uh, endured the the pain of suffering and uh, uh, that uh, gave me the sense of, you know, being there for people because I know that uh, it's not a good thing for people to suffer, you know, but I came from that environment and I think it's not a pleasant environment for people to be. So the, I always want to strive for, to help, you know, to be there for people, you know. So we were 15 in a, in a home that we all grew up to love each other and it taught me uh, the sense of loving and you know, the sense of caring, you know. That, that, was, that, that is important to me, and that I can use that, you know. And, and I used that in my career when I was playing, you know, loving people, you know, making people happy, you know, my friends around me, you know, and, um, that's how you can help me. George was brought up in the Claritown district of Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. It's a country struggling with the legacy of civil war and with grinding poverty. With average income still under $200 a year, Liberia's not yet on track to meet the Millennium Development Goals. And most voters are still illiterate. George's uncle showed us the house where George was raised by his grandmother, with over a dozen siblings and relatives. George lived here when he was playing for Invincible Eleven. This is the room George used to be in. George used to play yard football at the time, playing football in the yard. George would go to school. He would go to school, but hmm, he liked soccer more than school. Once our grandmother had a dream about him, she knew that one day he was going to be a great star. When was the last time you saw him? Well, we saw, we him saw him last in, in 2005. 2005. The young woman who lives in George's room now has her own heroes. But in the living room, there are still memories of a Liberian star. His love for the ball helped George Weir outgrow his childhood environment. The boy from the Monrovia slums grew to be World Footballer of the Year, playing for clubs like Chelsea and AC Milan. Nowadays, George's home in Liberia is a little more uptown. In the early 70s, football coach Pampin discovered the young George, remembered now as a little lazy, but already a great dribbler on the ball. Campines still welcome in George's new home and showed us round while George was away in Ghana. This is Milan. When, this is Milan. when Milan beat Juventus and so won the championship, this is the time Milan beat Juventus 2-1 and made Milan champion. George Best gave him this because he was the only man who wore the number nine shirt in Europe. He can't forget me. George can't do that. If George is playing in Europe and wants to call anybody here, he asks for me. He's going to ask for me. If he wants me, I'm going to be there. Any day he wants me, I'll be there. So he doesn't forget. Pampin met George at the age of six. Little did he know that 23 years later, his pupil would be elected European, African and 